Uh, Vincent, yes. did you find out who was the person? Uh, I have a list of uh, three people. Yeah, but, but you can look at the specific supplement and... Yeah, that's what I do. So, uh, so, I so who are the three people who bought it? Uh, those are the people somebody bought supplements and sold on uh, in on amazon and for us it's illegal they bought your supplements and sold them on amazon yes because it well because the price on amazon are higher so if you buy it you're getting it at a patient price and therefore if you sold it on amazon you would make more money which is kind of silly no, no, give us something else to eat. We didn't buy something that okay, put close the TV. Let's start. Uh, where is uh, Yara? Can you ask Yara to call uh, Elizabeth Ryan? She wanted to find the pricing for Prime. Okay, so um, throughout this week we have been talking about blood diagnostics. Elizabeth, what is diagnostics? When we say blood diagnostics, what do we mean? <laughs> oh God, you don't know that in my class is about being a, a paying attention. Beate, what are diagnostics? Okay. Uh, uh, you yeah, in English, obviously. <laughs> we wouldn't know what you were saying in German. I mean, in German too. Uh, I guess it's just. Um, I don't like guessing. Is it guessing? No. So, so, so they take my blood very painfully, put it in a tube, and then it goes to the lab, and then they dissect everything to the molecules to find out what's in the blood and what's not. That is very, very good. Yeah, Did you understand blood. that? What she just said? But about like her blood. Not the, not the painful part. <laughs> Did you understand what she said? Uh, so, 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 yeah, so if you're in my class, you have to pay attention. Okay, did you understand what she said? You did a, not? A little bit. What, what was the part you missed? Well, the thing is, I'm used to the blood... Uh, no, no, I don't want you to be used to anything. I want you to listen what we're teaching here. If you bring the brain of what's out there, you're going to get confused. Because out there is a lot of fake news. In here is you're in the kingdom of truth. Okay? So we don't want you bringing anything from outside and confusing yourself. So, Beate, thank you for a very, very simple definition, definition of it. Because if I defined it, you would still be looking at your dictionary. Right? You'll still be checking your dictionary. So, diagnosis is at the center of what we call inquiry. Why? Right? What is going on? Why? So, diagnosis is at the center of inquiry. And inquiry is going to lead us to some kind of answer. Don't be at it. You are distracting yourself. We're not there yet. Okay, I know your results are beautiful, but we're not there yet. Okay, you need, if you don't understand this basic architecture, then you're always going to get lost in the data. Okay? The challenge with data is that if you don't need a map, the data doesn't make sense. So I want to give you the map, okay, so that the data will make sense. So one of the big challenges in functional medicine is what we call peeling the onion. Because of the complexity of, so if I got that to be an onion, you know an onion has lots of layers. And typically, when an onion is going bad, which part goes bad first, Biate? You know an onion, right? The outer layer. That's not true. One. Correct. <laughs> well, well, but you see now we don't even know which part of the onion goes bad first. It's the innermost part of the onion that goes bad first. 
Yes. Next time, check your onion. Put it on your. Buy a farmer's market that's onion. That's what I do, and the mold gets created in the first or second layer. Yeah, but the part that really goes bad first is inside, and that's why you be careful. If it's already molding outside, it's already bad inside. Okay. You should throw it anyway. <laughs> exactly. You, this is because it's not mold. This is the what the mold throw out. The, do you, do, so, so he's struggling to explain something very, very important. Anything that's molded, you should throw out. Do you understand? Because it creates biofilm in our GI. Mold is a very dangerous issue in our culture. People think I can just cut it away. Well, the problem, you're not sure how much of it you're cutting away, and some of it is already entering the food you're going to eat. Just throw it away. So even if only a I said just throw it away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Didn't you listen to me? <laughs> throw it away. That's the problem with guacamole. Oh You're God, all I doing. Be dead already no wonder you are here oh, listening to me. The, jam and and the black color is the waste of the mold. Oh, because, because it goes the black the color is the waste. Of it 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 is it is a very dangerous oh. toxin for your system. Mold. You know, you don't really see it. There are billions of microbes inside. Okay, guys, too much interruption. She shouldn't be eating that. Oh, take it away. She should not be eating that. I didn't want it. No, that's not. Anyway, so guys, we just went through a very important topic and it's mold and in the last lectures I've talked about mold and dried food especially seeds most seeds are not properly dried so they have mold so when you're buying dried fruit or dried seeds you need to be very careful would you be able to taste the mold? well except you're like as good as me who grew up on a farm only people who really know the taste and the city people don't you don't even know how you don't know, know the billions of I microorganisms in mold. It's macadamia nuts. Everyone is buying it. Mother, the macadamia nuts in your own way. Correct. All and that's how you know that the mold has gone so bad that it's rancid. And the mold tastes better. So better. It's like so bitter. Bitter. Yeah. You can talk. Yeah, you can talk. Yeah, but by then it's already in your mouth. Already in your mouth. You have to go clean Okay. So it's very important that you you, you pay, uh, and you know you go to Costco and you buy all the nuts, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah, and get molded. So the challenge about, this is the challenge of chronic illness. It's like an onion, right? So we're going to talk about the, I, te I tend to say four causes of disease, but some people who are smarter than me say there are five or six. So let's look at the six causes which uh, your doctor will not tell you because he does not know. He was trained in acute care, not in wellness care. So the number one cause of disease is genetics, your genetics. Okay? And sometimes that shows up as part of your family history, right? Your mother had diabetes, your father had this. Those are important signals that we need to pay attention to. What is the key thing about genetics? It shows us optimizing mutations. What is optimizing mutation? And de-optimizing or sub-optimizing mutations. Optimizing is a good way it has. Uh, <clears throat> it's like black people and vitamin D. Okay. We are sub-optimized. White people are more optimized in their ability to absorb the sun and form vitamin D for their melanin. We are sub-optimized because we grew under the sun directly, so the melanin protects over absorption and burn. I was always wondering if that rumor is right, that they put vitamin D in the milk because of the African Americans. No, that's not true. It's because generally most Americans are short of vitamin D. 
because in the old days you spend all day out in the sun in the farm today you spend it in the offices and nobody even knows where the sun came down or not especially if you work in vegas right you don't even know where the sun is so 95 percent of americans are short of vitamin d so they put it in the mill because that's the only way they fortify it with calcium and vitamin d so they call it fortified milk right okay do we answer that so there are some things that uh, are enhanced and there are some things that are suppressed or sub-optimized and optimized so you need to know that that's why we run pathway genomics for everybody so that you know from your family what those things for some people they don't have the ability to tell when they're full satiety it's a genetic issue and some people the minute they taste food they're full they feel full right so we all have these mutations and what are mutations i forgot your name is it so yes. okay i got it okay so so um what is a mutation you've heard it before right i've heard it but i don't really understand it okay mutation is like when we make a photocopy right we're making a copy and some aspects of it are copied well and some are not and so it comes across as a different copy from the original that's really what happens with mutations so for change yeah it's a kind of change yes but it's very subtle kind of change and so they have about six or different kinds of mutations but mutation happens every time you make a copy because when the egg and the sperm come together and start multiplying they are making copies and the copying process causes copying errors okay and it is in the copying errors plus the ones that your mother brought and your father brought so they bring all their copy mistakes and then now they form you and then you make copies and we just increase the level of mutations okay and so mutations can be of three kinds right they are the same no change like your parents were white you're white right but your mother could have had dark hair and your father was blonde right that's a mutation because you come now and you are a different color or your eye color right and some mutations are optimizing right it gives you more capabilities and some mutations are suppressing or de-optimizing is that making sense it's very important because it's really at the core so if your parents grew up like in Norway or in Iceland where they were used for six months being dark and six months being light your genes have adapted to that when you move to California you're now your what we call epigenetics you're you're, you're gonna mutate so when you have your children and they go back to Iceland they cannot perform as well as the people who are in Iceland is that making sense so the people born in Iceland even their circadian cycle their sleep cycle has adapted to the circus the Sun cycle is that important is that clear you need to import and so the same thing with food so if you were born in the Philippines and you were used to eating Filipino food grown in the Philippines you come to America you're going to have a lot of issues because your architecture was adapted to Filipino food and cooking. Is that making sense? So that's why all of us, as we started traveling, because in those old days, when they traveled, they carried everything they had needed. They didn't go and eat in the new land, right? Now we just travel without food and we go to the new land and just start eating, as I'm going to be doing tomorrow or Monday in Vietnam. Okay? All right. Number two... Who can tell me what number two is, cause of disease? I'm looking at my patients. Let me look at one of our frequent attendees. Dad, what is the second cause of disease? The toxicity of the... Toxicity. He loves that word because uh, mold is part of toxicity. Very big problem. So people say why are people in the city so sick because of that if you go to the village or somewhere where there is no pollution most people they don't have chronic illness 
right? So toxicity is a big issue. Number three, and before we pass there, where does toxicity come from? How does it come into us? Water. Breathing? Breathing. Like eating. what kind of food? Those restaurant food, right? Because at home you don't have toxic food, right? Because she eats her avocado by just cutting around the mold and then eating the avocado. <laughs> Or this or the cabbage or the carrot when they are my grandmother was clear once there was mold on it ah. the whole head of cabbage yes that's why you need to but protect it properly it's not good to eat something like this to give our body no 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 immune no no <laughs> no the body doesn't need that kind we of need immune some, like, dirt one. yes you need dead headworms <laughs> those kind of things to really? give you that yeah not dangerous things like mold like mold you, grow, you know is. mold is almost impossible to kill mold All yeah it doesn't die it's almost impossible to kill mold because it's biofilm it's one of the big challenges people have in this country from mold eating bad food All those who grow up in villages they are stronger much stronger than mold. because we don't eat molded food you just throw it away because there's another one on the tree <laughs> Why cut up the avocado when there's another one right there on the tree, right? And we take it from the tree, put it, one day it ripes, we eat it, take another one from the tree, one day it ripes, you eat it. So there's no opportunity for molding, okay? And the minute we harvest the corn and the peanut, that evening we shred all of it, wash it, put it for it to be smoked, every day after that you're drying it. Same thing in the Philippines, right? Do the same thing. No, you're too long ago for you. Okay, number three, Elizabeth. What is the number three cause of disease? Do I have to do it in order? No, no, any order. Just tell me what is there. Okay. Um, isn't food? Well, okay. Let me. Yes, nutrition. Poor, poor nutrition. And what do they call the American diet? S A D. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The standard American diet. It's right. sad, right? It's a sad diet. Okay. Poor nutrition. We're not going to go further on that. Number four is what? Stress. 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 I didn't ask my staff. Stress. Why is stress cause of illness? No, 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 no. Stress is a good thing. It was given to us by God, by the architect. Sorry for people who don't believe in God. We call him the architect, the person who designed everything. Stress was given as a response for what? Fight, 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 fight. Correct. For us, for survival. Yeah. So then why is stress the cause of disease? So there is good stress, and which one is the bad stress? You need to know this. listening to our the people who pay money <laughs> it's too much stress. no no there's nothing like too much stress imagine when we went hunting that was too much stress but we didn't die from it imagine the lion you see the lion you're like can I run or should I pretend I'm dead or should I climb the tree how do you know which one you're gonna do if it's a lion I know because you're not a villager. Lions don't climb trees. I know. So the best thing is to climb a tree. But if it's a leopard, they climb trees. They'll climb, follow you up on the tree. So the best thing with a leopard, you lie down, pretend you're dead, stop breathing. And then he'll come and smell you. What kind of stress is that? It's, it's normal fight or flight. It's good stress. Because it protects you so that you can create kill children for the future. So the negative stress is which one? That's the negative. point. Yeah, what, what kind of stress is that? Tell me. Freeway stress. Freeway stress. What kind of stress is that? Uh, <laughs> don't get somebody else. No, but that kind of stress comes from where? Outside. No. Thinking? 
It comes from you. Yeah. The freeway ha didn't do anything to you. You are the one reacting to the freeway. So the stress came from you. And why are you stressed about that? Because you're always late and you're... <laughs> and whose fault is that? expectation on you. You see, you're always putting it out there. No. So much expectation that you put on yourself. Correct. Oh, so that's the bad... Stress, yes. Stress. No, no, you trying to be perfect. Oh. Call it looking good. You trying to be on time, trying to be sure, be perfect, to try to show people that you are a good person, right? Causes a lot of stress, isn't it? Because none of us is perfect. All right, so let's go. We, we had stress. So what is number five? Sleep? No. Yeah, one of the, you know, sleep is one of the fixes for it. Oh, okay. Yes. But actually, when you can't sleep, that's stress. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And that's a bad stress too? Yes. yes. And, and for women who are menopausal, it's really hormonal, but it's a bad stress too, yes. That's why many women who are in menopause have three or four times higher incidence of cardiovascular events because of that stress. So what is the fourth one, the fifth one? Money? <laughs> no, that's stress. Relation? No. Um, that's stress. Yes. <laughs> it's what we call residual infections. And mold is part of toxicity and also infection. So a lot of things like um, um, bacteria, colonies, or bad food that we eat in restaurants, or bad water that we drink, right? Um, all of that, um, uh, even when we take antibiotics, it kills only about 99.9%. That 1%? goes into our organs. Pay attention, pay attention. That 1% goes into our organs and over time that accumulation causes disease. Okay, it's very important that we know that. You can never kill, that is why having continuous flu is very bad for your long-term health. Because every time you have the flu, there are residual bacteria and viruses in your organs. Would inflammation yes. go under? That's, well, that's inflammation is part of this, part of that, part of this. Yes. So we're coming to that. That's why inflammation is one of the biggest issues with chronic illness. Yes, inflammation. So is this, make, are, you, are we clear about this? Are you getting this? So chronic illness, and that's why chronic illness is not like an accident. Chronic illness has this topography. This is when you were born 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. That's how it goes. That's why most chronic illness is in your 40s, 50s, and 60s. Because it's been burning. These things have been accumulating. That's why like diabetes, it starts from even when you're born, how you, whether you fed breast, breast milk or not, whether you were given proper vitamin D or not. So all of that accumulates and then shows up. And then people think, I have high blood pressure. It started over here. Are we, do we understand that? Okay, so this is the issue about chronic illness, it, uh, is that it takes a long, long time. And so when we start talking about reversal, people think that they have acute illness. Acute illness, where you have a bacterial infection, we give you antibiotics, five days you're fine. Chronic illness, we have to reverse this. That's why it would take the rest of your life. Somebody asked the question in our class on Thursday. For how long will I be taking supplements? 
and somebody whispered to her here for the rest of your life <laughs> welcome right there is no end to it okay all right so uh, I'm not gonna give you number six because I'm hiding it number six is actually part of this typically they call it allergens but I'm not gonna go into allergens because allergens is really part of toxicity and part of infections okay like um, being allergic to foods or to pollen or to all of that okay so they trigger a lot of illnesses all right okay are we clear about this you know we've been repeating this thing I want really want to make sure you understand these things and then now we're going to talk about the six in ingredients no the eight ingredients that gives good biological function there are eight of them so we're going to talk to that and then we're now going to come how do we get from here to good biologic function through diagnosis and treatment. I have a question about allergens. So mm -hmm. allergens don't come just from toxicity? No, they do. They come from inflammation. People they do different things. They do inflammation. They are 100% healthy. Um, you would not be allergic. You have no allergies. No. It's in you that your immune system is not functioning properly. Yes, if you have allergies, are. it means that there's a weakness in your immune function. And it then also means that you have a gut a big problem. That's what it is. Because our immune anyone system, like mine, I'm not allergic to anything. Huh? Anyone with allergies has a gut problem. All of, us, all of us have a gut problem. It's just part of life. We all have a gut problem. It's really difficult to have a very good gut. Because their immune system already has epigenetic adaptation to all of that. It's not a new thing. Do you get that? People who are healthy do not have allergies. Because, well, do you saw this diagram? Yes. <laughs> Chronic illness starts from birth. Many kids are not fed properly. That's why they have obesity now at 10. Right? Look at the studies we're running. Obesity didn't happen in this country until you were 40. Now, 5, 10 year olds are obese. Do you see that? Yeah, but I'm talking about the aller uh, uh, allergies. Yeah, but that's what I'm telling you. If you're eating McDonald's, eating fries, and drinking Coke, you're going to have allergies. No, a newborn baby doesn't have allergies. Not even if the mother does. No, they are reacting to something in the environment that is overwhelming them. You know, if there is dust here, I'm going to sneeze. That's not an allergy. That's something that I'm reacting to that's bad in the environment. That's not an allergy. I'm not allergic to, we're all allergic to dust. You want me to blow all dust here now? That is not an allergy because milk is normal stuff. I hope you get the difference. No, no, no hold on, hold on. Dust is something that we should be allergic. What does it do? It comes into your nose and it tickles. It tickles and your nose is going to react. Anything that's normal in the environment that causes that to happen, that's a food allergy. Food allergies come from a weak immune system. That's it. Right? I'm allergic to lions. I go. Right? I'm not going to play. I don't like fur from dogs or cats. Because that is not, should not be in the normal environment. When we, when animals and us grew up, we didn't live together. They lived out there, we live over here. You see that? So when you bring that into your environment, that's not really a functional allergy. It's something you're reacting to that's not part of your normal space. So it's different allergies. Correct. Are you listening to that now properly? Yes. So if you're allergic to a cat, 
the cat is triggering something in you but that's not natural cats should not be in your space and like she uh, her sister no her sister had to give up the cat and now she doesn't sneeze around anymore yes Obviously. Exactly. So you cannot connect allergies of things that are not natural in the environment to allergies of food and other things like that that are natural. How do you get rid of those allergies when you have a dust allergy? Well, but, but, but you, that's where you wear masks. For example, if you are working where there is dust, you should wear a mask. You should. So my person needs to walk around with a mask. Yeah. Yes, in most Asian countries, that's what people do. They wear a mask. You can breathe through a mask. You're protecting yourself. If you don't want to do it, you deal with the shit. You're going to get a lot of infections. Right? Because what is that kind of allergic reaction to something strange? It's your body saying something is not right. Okay? If it's food, your body is telling that the GI pro there's a GI problem with this. Why should food, you should be allergic to food? Why? But sometimes we are because of the chemicals that are inside the bullshit food. I don't drink milk, so I don't know. But the milk itself is undergoing a lot of different nonsense, right? So is that important? Like when I go to Vietnam, the first thing they ask me, because they know I'm an American, do you have any food allergies? <laughs> so I say, do Vietnamese people have food allergies, Vincent? Did you hear that? <laughs> Nobody in Vietnam even knows what allergies are. Even in Europe, rare. It's an American idea. I'm going have an allergy. I'm allergic to this. I'm allergic to that because everybody is sick. You get that? It's mostly in America that everybody talks about allergies. Mostly in Europe, people eat peanut, they eat this, they eat that, they eat crawfish. They, nobody has any allergy to anything. Here, we all are, like, oh my God, if I eat peanut, I'm going to go to choke and go to hospital. Then you, there's a problem. And we're going to need to fix the problem. Is that clear now? Okay, it's a big problem. That's why I don't. I didn't want to open that topic. It's a very big emotional topic in America, because people think that their allergies are justified, right? So if I walk into the room, I tell them, because some people are more sensitive than others. I'm sensitive. When I walk into this room, I can smell the dust like that, and I tell them immediately, yes, I can smell dust immediately. I'm not going to start sneezing, but doc, doctor, you will start sneezing. I don't, but I can tell the room is dusty. And so immediately I run into my office. Okay? All right. Let's move to the eight ingredients of good biologic function. What's the number one one on that, Elizabeth? Elizabeth? Food, water. Okay, hold on. You're beginning to run away. Calm down. <laughs> Elizabeth is showing off now, being arrogant. That's going to cause you stress, Elizabeth, being arrogant. Okay. I humbly suggest. Yeah, so we have eight ingredients, right? Eight ingredients for good biologic function. Number one, Elizabeth said was? Water. Water, hydration. Why is water so important? Elizabeth, tell us. Because our bodies are at, what, 60 to 80 percent water? That's number one. Number two? It cleanses us. Yes, for elimination and detoxing. Number three? How many numbers are there? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go until you get all of it. Oh, okay. Um, it reduces acidity. Right? Yeah. And why is acidity bad for us? Because uh, toxicity and all sorts of bacteria can grow in an acidic environment. Yes, acid environments are very toxic. Uh, and then number four, about water. Help digestion. 
Yes, it helps with uh, absorption. absorption. Yes, okay. Is that it? And mostly, yes, we talked about illumination. So you got water, right? How, m how much water should you drink every day? Oh, you have a special condition, so I'm not going to ask you. Eight glasses a day. Uh, no. How do you calculate how much water you should drink a day? Weight of the person. Yeah, and what do you do with the weight of the person? Yes, and? <laughs> no, no, she's. So you take your weight, you divide it by two, and that's the number of ounces. Okay? So I'm 200 pounds, so I should drink 100 ounces of water every day. That's what's required. And hydration is a very important issue at the cellular architecture. So when you are dehydrated, your skin sags and your skin be because when you're hydrated, when all the cells are properly hydrated, there are no wrinkles, mostly, except the one that comes with age, right? But you can manage your wrinkles much better, okay? All right? Could what? We get, I'm sorry. Could we get poison because we drink so much water, more than it should be? Except you have a medical condition, yes except there's a medical condition and typically the condition has to do with your kidneys because that's where the processing happens so the body cannot have and if there's water retention like people have swollen feet it's because you have a medical condition particularly the body will send out the water as quickly as it comes in okay all right because that's the other thing i just want to mention around water so all water soluble supplements you cannot overdose on them because you will flush them out it is the fat soluble ones that are very dangerous okay so it's important that you know which are the fat soluble ones and the water soluble ones. and the fat soluble ones are how many i'm looking at my staff vincent Give us one fat soluble supplement. Okay. okay, did you hear that? Those are the ones where you cannot overdose on. A, E, K. And so we normally give you D and K. And C, you have to be really be careful. It's good for the immune system. A, which is also fat soluble, you have to be careful in E. Okay, so those are the ones you cannot overdose on because the body is going to deposit them because they are fat soluble. How do you know how much? We give you the amount you need, we prescribe it at, at the appropriate level. So that's why you don't go to Costco and buy yours and just start taking them. And you're, there is no doctor out there that's going to tell you this because we are just really smart, we know the answer, so we are giving it to you and give you clear direction because we know which ones you can overdose on. So if I say take more of this, it's because it's a water soluble one and I know it's, but I can tell you to take more of the omega threes because that is very good for you, especially being a woman. You cannot overdose on that because it's a good fat. You see that? I said fat soluble supplement. I didn't say fat. Okay, so taking good omega 3s, you cannot overdose on that. It's actually very good for you. What is better to drink? Beer or water? <laughs> no, believe me, believe me, there is a thought here. I don't think that drinking beer is better than drinking no, water. No, no, okay. <laughs> 100 ounces of beer every day. That's <laughs> why they drink beer more than. In Germany? <laughs> Oh, because of the October first. <laughs> now you're making fun of my patient, my no, client. Because no, I left with him. Oh, in Germany. Okay, that's so funny. Okay. All right. Number two, Elizabeth, you were reeling them off. Uh, well, we call it nutrition, and we have a special name for it. It's macro nutrients. Why am I calling it macro nutrients? What are macronutrients? 
Elizabeth, what are macronutrients? Big molecules? Yes, and what are they? Give us example. Of a big molecule? Yes, of food, of nutrients. We have big ones and we have small ones. What are the big ones called? Cherries. <laughs> <laughs> no, so macronutrients, it's important guys, are proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Why do we call them macronutrients? Yeah, what? No, you, I'm asking you. You are the one paying. Why do we call them? They're very important. They're macro. No, no, no. Why are they called macronutrients? Because they help you build the muscle. No, she was getting close to it. Why are they called macro? Yeah, they're building blocks. Yes. Building blocks. Fats and carbohydrates all right and that's why we then so these are fats proteins and carbs and when we comes to this we have a limitation on protein right you cannot eat too many proteins it's not good for you we typically on the good fats we don't put a limitation but we put a limitation also on that, giving us an overall calorie restriction. Which for most people should be about 1200 maximum. Because the body doesn't really need that. Okay. When you're hungry, what does the body need? Don't tell me food. Oh, water. Water. Uh, water first. Right. Then what? The nutrients. What kind of nutrients? Micronutrients. Our second, third. Micro. Micro. Micronutrients. Right? Ah, Beate, what are micronutrients? Give me an example. What? Grapes? Greens. <laughs> no. Okay, so they are vitamins and minerals. Okay, you need to remember that, okay? Vitamins and minerals. Why are this important? The, the first one were the building blocks. What are vitamins and minerals? No, no. You are going close, but what are those kind of things called? Coenzymes. <laughs> All right, they are coenzymes or what? They are coenzymes, they are enablers, they are what? They are cofactors. Did you hear that? Cofactors, coenzymes. So, what are cofactors and coenzymes? What is the meaning of that? The co means you must have another combined. Yes. Function properly in the yes. Body. In the presence of them, they bind and carry to go form the bind. So, they are catalyzing the operate. The, yes. Okay. The cofactors. They bind and carry to the right place. They are like Uber. They come, bind, and take them to the right place on bind. Bind, take them to the right place on bind. Right? And then they sit there and watch and make sure it works well. They are like, they are more so important. That's why you must take them every day. That's why they are, the, the government came out with the RDA. Alright? We gave you copies of this already. It's alright. We gave you copies of this already. That's why they call it the RDA. The Recommended Daily Allowance. If you notice, when they talk about macronutrients, they give you a guide. This one is not a guide. It's mandatory. It's recommended. The FDA. 
Yes. This is very, very important. And so why is it that most people don't take enough of it? Because when we said poor diet, we didn't actually mean macronutrients. Americans eat enough of that. <laughs> we actually meant micronutrients. That's what's poor in our diet. Okay. Well, you know, I was reading an article this morning from uh, Walls, the woman who cured herself from MS, Dr. Walls, the Walls Protocol. She was talking about organ meat, right? In the old cultures, when we killed a cow or a goat or chicken, the organ meat was the most important part of the meat, not the flesh. But now in America, Nobody eats organ meat, they eat the flesh. The flesh actually doesn't contain a lot because all the vitamins and minerals are in the organ meat. The tongue, the heart, the liver, the spleen, the pancreas, all of that. Correct, yes. Because if you look at liver, you will see that it contains most of this. Well, that's why you need to go to the market where they are growing cattle, free range, chicken, and all of that. Okay? So, organ meat is very good for you. Do they sell organ meat at farmer's market? Yes, that farmer's market has organ meat. Yes. Okay? So, you can buy organ meat. It's another way for you to get this rather than buying steak. Yeah, I was in the market this morning after tennis. Um, Highland, where they sell furniture, that furniture place. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's move. Taking a long time. Let's move to number four. What's number four, Biate? Sleep. Beate, why is sleep so important? What's the function of sleep? That's one. But what's the most important aspect of sleep? One is that it is at that point that the immune system does its roundup check. It goes and check the system, the system check. Yes, and update your software from heaven, right? It unplugs you, plugs it, and reboots the system, right? Like you do with your computer. The second thing that it does is that the janitors clean all the waste elements. That's why the pee in the morning or the poo is very nutritiously smelly. Okay? Because overnight, they cleared everything ready for the waste man to dump it. Okay? Uh, that Those macrophages, they go into every cell and gather that. Typically during the day, they can't do enough of it because they're using the energy to, for you to be active. But so you know the difference between basal metabolic rate and your activity metabolic rate, right? They showed you on your body composition report yesterday. So you find out that the difference between our basal metabolic rate and our activity metabolic rate minus is typically around 700 calories. Is that making sense? Typically, do you still have your report from, okay, do we have any sample body composition report? You have one? Okay. Okay. May I, please? Okay, your basal metabolic rate is 1327. And your activity metabolic rate is 2043. So it's about 700. Is that making sense? Wait, wait. I'm just doing math, right? So I, I trust you. Yeah. 
Yes, 20 for the 3 minus 13, 20, 27 is about 700. Okay. Right? 700 and what? And 4? Yeah, 700 and something. Yeah. So the question I want to ask you is, that 700 is all you need to move around. The body at rest requires 1,300 calories. That's important that you understand that. That managing the body architecture is a big job. And sleep is really, really important. So if, if your activity level is high and you use and consume more calories, um, so would you add those calories on to the 1,200 you're supposed to have? It? No. So that is really the issue about calorie restriction. Typically, people want you to eat at your basal metabolic rate so that all the calories you take is used up. So none of it is stored as fat. And if you're already fat, they want you to eat below your basal metabolic rate. Right? Remember? That's why I said 1,200. She's even above 1,200 on basal metabolic rate. So if you're eating at 1,200, where is the body getting the 130 extra calories? Where, Biate? Exactly. Do you get that? That's how you lose weight. So if you're running at below your basal metabolic rate, the body has to go find that energy from somewhere. So it will go and look at fat. If you're eating above your basal metabolic rate and you are not really active, it will store that extra energy as fat. Is that making sense, guys? Very clear. You want to say something? Oh, sorry. Okay, are we making that very clear? So the reason I'm taking time to explain these numbers is so that you really understand some very simple principles. So that's why we talk about calorie restriction. You really need to eat slightly below your basal metabolic rate until you've acquired your right weight. Then the only way you increase calories is by getting the very good calories. Is that making sense? Are we good? All right. Here's your report. So let's go to the next one. What's the next one, Elizabeth? Exercise. Wonderful. Exercise. Okay, why do we need exercise? Hold on, not you. Why do we need exercise? No, that's not why. <laughs> In America, that's true. But that's not why you need exercise. To maintain our muscle? Uh, something around that. It's really to maintain integrity. Flexibility. Yes, all these things. That's why we have the four types of exercise. What are they, Grace? The four types of exercise? Stretching. Flexibility, strength, and endurance, or what? Cardio. Cardio, yes, for endurance. Right? Cardio for endurance, or so stamina. Okay? Those are the four kinds of exercises that we need. Okay? And none of it is to burn fat, it's to give this body resilience or anti fragility. Okay? We good? All right. Let's continue. Number six. Beate, what is number six? Relationships? Well, that's a good one, but that was too early. Okay, relationships. What is it about relationships? So these are the eight ingredients to give us great biologic function. Wow, good, good. So why is relationships important? Beate, you said it. Why is that? Oh, why is that? Uh, what do we call that aspect of us? We're social animals. And we actually do well 
when we are in good community. So community is a functional part of our health. Okay? Community is a functional part of our health. So it's a very important aspect. But you have to make sure that you are in good community. Being in toxic community is one of the things that causes chronic illness because of stress. Yes. So if you don't love your husband or your wife, you should divorce them because it's bad for your health. Or you learn to love them. You quit or you love them. Right? Staying there because of the value of the house or the money you're going to make or because people may laugh at you for getting divorced will kill you. So you either love him or her or leave him or her. Very important for your own health. Right? And it's all a choice. In the old days there was no love, just acceptance. And they had beautiful marriages. Then we came to America and they gave us choice. And now we are all confused. Right? Okay. So very important relationships that you maintain very good reinforcing relationships because toxic people can be very dangerous, right? Elizabeth just went through some of that and you know how just deeply stressful it is when you meet very dangerously toxic people. Okay? They can be very, very destructive to your health. Alright? Because they just consume your brain. You can't even think anything anymore. Okay? Sorry? We meet the toxicity person. How can I avoid it? Avoid or or kill, or, or, or kill them. Okay. <laughs> the problem is going to yes. yes. be yes. saying something. So when you meet toxic people, um, because most of us are not very strong, um, we, we, we don't want to make people offend people. Yes. So we tolerate bullshit. You know that I don't, right, Grace? You know I don't tolerate bullshit, right? Because I learned very young that it's actually a waste of my time. Right? You know that woman who teaches, the Japanese woman who teaches people how to tidy their lives? She had an article on Facebook. She says, uh, toxic people are like <laughs> people who overstay their welcome. You know, like guests in your house who have overstayed. Right? And you're trying to get rid of them. Right? So you just get rid of them. Toxicity is a very dangerous thing. Toxic people in relationships, they're very, very bad. And sometimes we get attached to toxicity. Notice I use the word attached. When we attach ourselves to toxicity, what is the principal issue? It's low self-esteem. Low self-esteem is at the core of people being in toxic relationships. And what is the, the Vincent, in my teaching, what causes low self-esteem? No, it's a lack of identity. It's a lack of knowing who you are. Confidence. Respect to yourself. Well, that comes from identity. Knowing who am I? and what my purpose is. So low self-esteem is the reason why people tolerate toxicity. Right? Toxicity is something that you know is damaging you. We all know when things are damaging us. Right? I don't have to tell you. The psychiatrist doesn't have to tell you. You know this thing is damaging me. Then you ask yourself, why don't I get out of it? And the reason you can't get out of it because you have low self-esteem. Why? You think nobody else is going to love you. You think you are not going to be able to financially take care of yourself. You think a lot of bullshit. Right? So, it is a very, so that's why we've included relationship in our biologic function health because it's a very important aspect of good health. Okay? All right. 
Number seven. Dad, what's number seven? Uh, what, what? Toxicity. Yeah, toxicity. Yes. Yes, yes. So the reason we include toxicity here is because of how you detox the environment. So really it's not toxicity, it's really about detoxification. detoxification. Yeah, the detoxification. So it's the detoxification. Alright? And then number eight, because we've talked a lot of toxicity already, what's number eight? What do you think is number eight? <laughs> uh, it is our stress response. So I don't call it stress, I call it the stress response architecture. So we have, we need to build, it's like somebody said, I went to a funeral the other day and they said at the funeral that it is a good thing for a child to bury the parents. So every child should do what? Prepare to bury your parents because that is the proper thing. Because in my culture it's a deep curse for the parents to bury the child. Because it is a sadness that you don't recover from, right? So it is the, the, one of the things about stress response is that you have to prepare for that right it's gonna happen so people say oh my mother died right and we were not ready well they're gonna die right so you get ready you get the plot you get this you do that you buy the insurance do all the things that you need to do because they're gonna die then after you you bury your parents what do you do next elizabeth you start preparing for your own death oh there you go because you're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> you need to prepare. Yeah. What are we going to do with your body? Where are we going to keep it? Are we going to throw it in the street? Are we going to burn it and throw your ashes into the wind? Or are we just going to ignore that you died? Right? Whatever. You have to make a plan and tell people. Because then you die and then nobody knows what to do. Because you didn't leave a plan. Right? Okay. But also, because before that we spoke about toxicity and relationships, right, and the things that stress us. For example, I'm not stressed anymore by, um, I used to be stressed by things like how people squeeze the toothpaste. <laughs> you are like that too? No, I don't get stressed. Okay, you know some people have to... They, they squeeze the toothpaste from the middle, right? Oops. So there were little things that used to stress me. Oh, like recently, I have overcome the being stressed by how people drive. That doesn't stress me anymore. I chose that. I'm like, okay, they drive what they drive. I'm not going to be stressed. All right. So our stress response system is a very important thing that we need to begin to say, okay, make a choice which are the things that are going to stress me and which things are not going to stress me right yes. for example uh we cannot because if you stress about everything you're going to kill yourself yes. right so choose the look at your life you know the things that stress you and just say okay it's not going to stress me anymore because all of us have habits that stress other people isn't it yes right dr yi we all have habits that stress other people. Like as Koreans, a lot of people are concerned about how other people look at you. So we are always well, stressed. Good. That's a lot of stress. Exactly. Then you can you cannot live your life. So And you're never relaxed. So I say what would make me happy? What it is my life. So I would do things that I enjoy that I like. Exactly. So what other people think of me is none of my business. Exactly. And you're not in control of that. And that's at the source of sexism and racism. So there are a lot of black people who go around worried about whether people are racist. They are. <laughs> Why should that bother me? Well, yeah, exactly. 
So women go around thinking, oh, they don't respect me because I'm a woman. They are not respecting you. Why should that bother you? It's not stopping you from doing whatever you want to do. You see the point. When you go to the heart of sexism and race, they just complains. We can never fix a society where there is no racism or sexism. It's just inherently part of being human. Right? I call it preferences. Some people prefer to work only with men. Some people prefer only white men. Some people prefer only black men. You know, that's how life works. Isn't it? Everyone to his own taste. First of all, they don't pay your rent. They shouldn't bother you. Right? Is that make, is, so we need to build a stress response system and say, why should I worry whether they look at my house like this or not? They don't pay for it. So whatever opinion they have about my house, it's really not valuable. You see the point? But people stress about that shit. Oh, we need to get a house, and then we need to do a housewarming. I said, why should we do a housewarming? Well, everybody does it. No, you don't have to do it. Nobody says you should. There's no law in this country that you buy a house, you do housewarming, right? And so we suffer from all of this. That was it. Did I miss anything? Alright, let's talk now about your reports and how everything fits together. So now that I've given you the eight ingredients and I've given you the causes of disease, now we want to talk about your blood biomarkers. Are you okay? okay? Oh, all right. Good. Okay. So pay attention, guys. Pay attention. This is now very important. So we run two sets of blood biomarkers. We run Vibrant America. Soon in my classes, I'm going to say no phones. <laughs> and we run... No, you're not doctors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're not, they don't expect you to be always available. Okay, so we run two blood tests. Boston Diagnostics measures four things. What are those four things? Tell us. <laughs> no, why should I tell you? It's yours. No, 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 no. Here. Yeah. We, we made some notes because we knew that you were going to forget. We made some, no, here, take that. You can keep that. So we made some notes because we knew you would forget. So, yeah, go ahead. Quickly. So there are four parts to heart disease testing. Why do we test for heart disease, Beate? <laughs> there are lots of other things. Why heart disease? Well, heart disease is the number one killer for women and number two for men. It's a critical area of testing. Is that clear? That's why we test for it. And so what are we testing when we look at it? There are four things. It's all there. We look at the lipids. I told you the fats. Very, very, very important. Right? The good fats. And you need excess of it. Because in the old days, the body actually preferred burning fat. That's why we were all tall and lean. You see those uh, people from uh, Senegal? They're like sticks. And remember in Eskimo, they ate fat off the seal. They always ate fat. Fat, fat. Because that's really what the body loves. Number two is that thing that kills inflammation. Inflammation doesn't just happen, right? Inflammation is really, really a bad thing for us. And inflammation is really a response to stress. Different kinds of stress. Sugar stress, sleep stress, right? That's where it's coming from. It's a stress response. Why is it a stress response? It's storing something in case something happens. 
right and so the fat now begins to look for where to be stored that's why we eat a lot of sugar most addictions for carbohydrate comes from stress it's a stress response and what we call it a comfort food it makes us feel good what are you feeling good about right because your identity is not so nobody loves me let me have some more ice cream right we want to make ourselves feel yeah it, it yeah it makes you happy for a little while like mm -hmm. it's like cocaine yeah for a moment no your body likes it even though I we didn't have sugar many Africans come here and fall in love with ice cream first of all they think if white people are eating it it must be a good thing and then they start eating it and then get addicted after all there was none in Korea when you were young you ate it only on Sunday or when you went to the movie but now you're <laughs> <laughs> it's better chocolate because it hands the happiness yeah well we ate the cocoa, cocoa yeah. direct number three metabolics <coughs> right which is really how your body is dealing with all the food right the macronutrients so metabolics is really about the macronutrients and so diabetes is really at the core of our metabolic architecture because of the higher consumptions of carbohydrates so now the body has this excess sugar in the bloodstream and it doesn't know what to do with it so it stores it at fat and that causes inflammation then our genetics so the, this report it's a very important report because it's looking at those four things and it's focused on heart disease very very important it's the number one killer that's why I run this report we need to know how well you're doing in those four areas lipids inflammation metabolics and your underlying genetics are we clear very very important no other company apart from Boston goes to the in-depth running of this than Boston Heart that's why it's expensive I'm not going to go through the numbers but you have those reports already except you right and you but these people two people have it already any questions on Boston Heart we go now to vibrant America any questions hello Americans any questions vibrant America micronutrient report Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Okay, Vibrant America Micronutrient Report. So this report is a very, very important report. I want you to open to this page. Okay. It's the second page, or num page number three. Yeah, that page, okay? So Vibrant America is measuring two things in two ways. It's measuring vitamins and minerals. And it's measuring it intracellular and extracellular. So people are going to say, well, blood test is blood test. No, they're not the same things, right? We're measuring different things. So Vibrant America has just brought out this very important test. Because don't forget, here we were looking at lipids. We were looking at metabolics. We were looking at inflammation and genetics. So you could say this was like a macronutrient area, right? At a high level even though it does some micronutrient. This now goes into the heart of those enzymes, cofactors, and all those things that really make life happen. Because without them, a lot of the biochemical reactions will not take place. They are critical ingredients for life, right? Micronutrients. So this is a very important report because we want to see how well you're doing inside the cell and outside the cell. So, um, 
Let's turn to this page. Page number four. So this is the key page in reading your report, that page. So when it is normal, extracellular and intracellular, that is very, very good. Very few people have that kind of report. That means that you are taking in enough vitamins and minerals and your body is absorbing it very well. Do you understand that? That's what it's saying. And there, it's rare that we found somebody without a problem. And so we'll talk later about the problems, right? But when you're deficient extracellular and your normal intracellular, it says that your long-term nutrient status is optimal, but short-term needs improvement. Why is that? Look at it again. Extracellular, you have... Intracellular is normal. Extracellular is deficient. Why does it mean that your long-term nutrient status is optimal, but the short-term needs improvement? Where are the nutrients needed most? Intra. Yes. So if intra... Guys, pay attention. This is very important that you know this. So if intracellular is normal and extracellular is deficient, it means you need to feed it as soon as possible. The extract. Yes. Because the cell is operating well, but soon it's going to need. Right? Soon it's going to need reserve. And it has to pull that from the extracellular. Okay? Okay. So let's look at the last one. When both of them are deficient, as we're going to see later in this report, then you really want to increase your nutrient intake, but also do a bioavailability. What is bioavailability? Is it a test? No. What's a bioavailable? No, no, no. It's just that it's that nutrient available to your body. Yes, and what does that mean? How would you do that? What's bioavailability mean? No. It means that we are making sure it gets straight into your bloodstream. How would you do that? IV. Yes, to an IV or liposomal. Because the normal means takes a long time. Do you get that? So for example, if you want glutathione, you want to do a push, straight away it's in your bloodstream, straight away it's detoxing. When you take a glutathione supplement, it's going to take a couple of hours to get there. You get that? So bioavailability with the liposoma or the IV becomes a very good way, or liquid supplements, right? That's why sometimes the drink is a good way, because you know that liquids are faster absorbed, right, than solids. Is that making sense? So I'm not going to walk through the details of the report. I want to go to the end and walk you through. Go to this page. This page. That's page number eight. Remember we said which were the fat-soluble supplements, Elizabeth, which did we say they were? Fat-soluble. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. When we, when, when we say fat-soluble, what does fat-soluble mean? It is soluble. <laughs> like fat. <laughs> Uh, what does fat soluble mean? These are very important things for you to know. What does it mean? It uh, soluble means that it um, gets inside and it's no. In the, it's supposed to be stored in the bed. No. 
it's it's dissolved in fat. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. Go ahead. It dis it's dissolved in fat. And therefore harder. No. So when we say something is fat soluble, water soluble, that is what carries it into the cell. Into the cell. It needs to be soluble and carried. That's what water does. We dissolve something in water, then the water carries it. You take powder, right? Can you swallow powder? No. Why do you dissolve it? Exactly. So if you took A, you cannot dissolve A in water. You have to dissolve it in oil. It will mix well in oil, and then you can take it. Right? Is this making sense? Uh, Beate is like kind of lost. Processing? Are you okay? I process differently. Okay, no, that's fine. No, no, see, see, that's why we are really taking time on this stuff. when you have two languages. Yes, you're translating and yeah. But guys, you know, you guys have paid and you are patient and the process for getting have be stay, having vitality is for you to understand and to take action do you understand so you a lot of people are there ignorant that's why they're not well that's why they're unhealthy so when you have knowledge you can take action sorry doctor you wanted to say no, something yes eat it with their fat or with mct oil yes it's helpful for absorption so whenever you take the supplements that are fat soluble it's good that's why i keep saying eat a lot of fat oils good fat. yeah good fat yeah thank you good fat okay so I, i'm usually taking my with yes at the same time or just take a mct oil with your supplements and then drink water when you take the other ones so it's about solubility and absorption. Yes, uh, Grace. I'm taking the vitamin C and E. Mm -hmm. Same time, can I take the same time? Yes, with oil. oil vitamin C. Vitamin C is see, see, when, when everything goes to the stomach, when you shake water and oil, what happens? Hold on. Uh, what happened? Layer. Which one is on top? The oil. oil. Why? The light is lighter. Yeah, it's a gravity issue. So even your stomach is the same thing. When you eat oily food and you drink water, the same thing is going to happen. So the things that are soluble in fat will be dissolved in fat. The things that are soluble in water will be dissolved in water. The stomach knows how to deal with it. Okay? Are we making sense here? So that's the same thing. So if you shake, if you mix C and D or E, in water and oil and shake it, they are going to dissolve in the areas where they are soluble. Is that making sense? Beate, you are caught lost again. Yeah, I just always have to picture All right. it. Alright, okay. So, is B2 water soluble or oil. soluble? B2. Is B2 water soluble or fat soluble? Why? Because you said so. Anyway, I'm joking. Yes, it is. Okay. So I'm just going to read a couple of them for you to really appreciate what these vitamins are. Two very important coenzymes. What's a coenzyme? If they work together. Uh, they support the enzyme. Okay. They make the enzyme active. The enzyme is sleeping, vitamin B2 shows up, we got work to do, then they go work, okay? They are involved in energy metabolism and they are derived from ripoflavin to participate in oxidation reduction reactions. This is the core of the biochemistry of the human body, oxidation and reduction reactions. That's what causes 